gyms were shut, tracks were shut. I wasn't allowed access to physios, biomechanics, SNC, my coach. And I remember just thinking, I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to be training to like an Olympic standard. BBC Sounds. So let's talk about you growing up. You know, I know that yeah. you found athletics, I believe, at eight years old. But talk, talk about where you're from, your background, what life was like for you growing up. Um, I literally just had the most normal upbringing. I was just very fortunate to have parents that were very much invested in letting me be the best version of me. So annoyingly to my parents, I was one of those kids that was like hyperactive. So I wanted to learn how to dance, to swim, to... What did I used to do? I used to go to brownies. I used to play the euphonium, then the trumpet. I had French lessons. I had diving lessons. I did running. I did Proper hockey. 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 Yeah. Proper, Proper, just Proper. everywhere. <laughs> I was just yeah. everywhere, everywhere. So um, I think my parents were happy when I settled on one sport and they got to cut down the various <laughs> the, yeah. the trips the everywhere. Traffic. Yeah. But in all honesty, I was just, I just literally had a really normal, boring, like really boring upbringing. Just very fortunate to have two supportive parents. Very fortunate that they really tried hard to give me the opportunity to explore what I wanted and be just whatever I wanted to be, which, which I'm very grateful for. I know that's not the reality of many people's lives for various reasons. So I'm just really grateful. Yeah. And, and where did that love for athletics come? Where, where do you remember your first memory where you thought, you know what, I love this. This is something that... I know at eight um, years old, you can't say, I know you can I say know. I the Olympics, but this is what I wanted to do. I did, I did. When I was eight years old, I remember, it was, I literally wanted to go to the Olympics. So I remember I watched um, Athens 2004 and I saw Kelly Holmes. And I remember seeing the relay boys do well in Athens. And I remember thinking, no, that's cool. I want to do that. And it was just the whole idea of the Olympics that all these people that were good at something got together every four years for what? well I thought looked more like a party but a big <laughs> festival of sport <laughs> and competed because I'm really competitive but like I've always been fiercely competitive so when I was like eight I just knew I wanted to be an athlete like that's all I wanted to do that's why I tried all those sports I was like I don't know what I'm good at but I knew I'm sporty so I wanted to do that but when um I found sprinting I, I think I'm very biased but I don't think anything matches up to the tension when you're on the line for a hundred meter race like nothing matches that nothing can match the adrenaline rush nothing can match the kind of the butterflies you feel it's it's like you know you've got a world cup final and people are taking penalties and then everybody's on the edge of their seats and you're like looking at the person taking the penalty and you're like what are they made of like have they got it or not mm. and that's what it's like to be a sprinter and from that moment when i was eight years old when the gun goes and you can just run as fast as you can no excuses nowhere to hide just run no holding back i was like no i love this i absolutely love it like i can just unleash all my energy and go for it how yeah. have you found lockdown i mean i'm intrigued to talk you know about how's it affected you individually um coming in training and mindset and obviously you missed out on probably the pivotal moment of your career we know it's only yeah. delayed but <laughs> how has that come you know how has that been to deal with particularly in the peak leading up to trying to peak in terms of performance for the olympic games um i think it's been a very kind of strange few months or four or five months for a lot of the me personally and a lot of the athletics community because um, with this whole situation, I think we went from kind of being in in like blind naivety in like January, February, like don't be silly. And I even remember doing an interview with like Jamaican radio being like, don't be silly. Of course, the Olympics will go ahead. But as it's obviously unfolded, we've just been like, yeah, obviously it's completely unfeasible. And and I think it's been a slow process for us all to get to like that point of realization. But when it was finally postponed, I remember really weirdly personally feeling relieved at that point which sounds so strange for any athlete to say and you're probably thinking I don't understand <laughs> but um it's because I remember that day that it got postponed I was we were in the UK we were in lockdown all gyms were shut tracks were shut I wasn't allowed access to physios biomechanics SNC my coach and I remember just thinking I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to be training to like an Olympic standard for what I want to be the best moment of my career from inside my flat. But I literally, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I have no clue. So I was Not doing all the workouts, like Joe Wicks in the morning. Honestly, <laughs> I was doing like, I was gymming on my patio, like sweating, like, yeah, I can do this. I could do this. But um, yeah, when it got postponed in the weirdest sense, I was relieved because it's been a very strange period. But after that, I think it's been 
it's been a lot calmer. It's been a, a lot more just trying to stay safe, but keep your family safe and, and just focusing on being, yeah, a, a good citizen, really. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts.